Så. Så. Ja. Yeah. Asian new, new knives. Oh, good thing I was sitting under that table the whole time. That's a good thing, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's do this. All right. Here we go. Hello everybody, Seth V here, coming at you from the Knife Center. I know David C. Anderson is who you were expecting to see here, but he is taking a well-deserved break, and I'm here to fill his uh, slightly larger than average hands. So, with that, let's jump into the new knives. We've got a bunch of cool stuff here to check out. Starting with the Civivi Baby Banter. And based on the number of messages I've been getting on Instagram about this knife, a lot of you are really excited to pick this one up. Uh, now that it's here in person, I can see why. It's significantly smaller than the original Banter uh, with a 2.3 inch blade made from Nitro V steel. Uh, it's available in several different colors of G10 and blade finish combinations. This one caught my eye. It's the purple with the gold thumb stud. Uh, very royal, very cool. Uh, but what makes this knife really work, I think, is the nice generous finger choil here that allows you to get a full grip on the knife, even though when it's folded up, it's extremely small. The detent is great. We got the typical excellence of UV build quality. And uh, designer Ben Peterson just, uh, I think he has another hit on his hands. This one's really cool. I think like the banter, this is going to be a very popular knife for people who just want a simple design that can get stuff done. Uh, I particularly like this little run of jimping here on the inside of the finger choil. It really helps give you a sense of security in your grip when you're coming up right behind the edge here. It's a nice little touch and it goes a long way towards making this knife an excellent everyday carry piece. One extra feature that's actually different from the original banter is this one has a reversible pocket clip. So it comes equipped for right hand carry, but there's a nice little notch here on the show side that you can put the clip into should you wish to carry it left-handed. So lefties rejoice. So next up, another Civivi. This is new from designer Elijah Isham, a front flipper called the Lazar. Uh, the one I pulled here has sort of coated and brushed brass scales and a Damascus blade, but it's also available with copper and Damascus or G10 and a 10CR series stainless steel. I dig the trailing point blade. It's, uh, it, it is technically a trailing point, but because of the geometry of this handle and the way the blade kind of starts off angling down, uh, the tip of the knife is still, is still not too far above the center line of the knife, which I think as you put this to work, will make it feel very natural in a cut. Following that, we have a new member of the Civivi Elementum family. Uh, several, in fact. Uh, this one has shred carbon fiber scales with some silver flecks in there. They are smooth and actually contoured. Uh, it's also available with gold and with copper. Really striking, really brilliant handle material. And the blade is Damascus to uh, match the fancy vibe here. Uh, the Elementum is of course a hit, it goes without saying, and I really like what the contoured scales do for the ergonomics. Just, it's just more comfortable, a little more hand-shaped. So moving from the Elementum, we are stepping up from Civivi to their high-end sister brand, Wii, with what looks like an Elementum from Wii. This is the Wii Knives Sakshi. Like the Elementum, it comes out of the gate with a bunch of different variations. Uh, I pulled this black 20 CV blade, marble carbon fiber scales with brilliant anodized blue liners. Check those out. Um, I really like how they've polished the liners here so it feels very smooth and uh, the color really pops. It's, uh, here, let me pull up the Elementum so you can see them side by side. The Elementum is a touch smaller with a bit of a different blade shape, a hollow grind on the Elementum as well. There's a full flat grind on the Wii. And uh, yeah, but apart from that, I, they are very similar knives and that's a good thing. So the price on this is 182.75, uh, although there is a slightly more affordable version with wood scales that comes in at 161. Yeah, if you, if you like the Elementum but wish you had an upgraded blade steel, and a little bit 
of an upgraded feel. This is a knife for you. I, check this out, this is a cool little detail. So right here on the liner, which is actually titanium, they've gone to the trouble of inserting a steel lock bar insert so that you get that nice consistent lock up over time. And uh, it's little touches like that that really separate Wii knives from Civivi knives and uh, just go a long way towards making this knife feel like a fancier, more expensive version. Uh, one other thing I, that I, I like about this design is you can use that fuller in the blade to flick or thumb the blade open quite easily. So even more fidget friendly than the Elementum. Okay, so moving from that to a only slightly new Wii knife design. This is the Black Void Opus designed by Justin Lundquist with a symmetrical V grind. So uh, as you can see, as I flip this around, we have a grind on one side and a grind on the other. So <laughs> originally this came with a chisel grind, which I thought was really cool. Not a lot of great chisel ground knives out there. Uh, but I think for most people are interested in the symmetry of a regular V grind. And so we answered the call with this new version. Um, it comes in a bunch of variants. This one is all blacked out, 20 CV blade steel, titanium handles with a cool, uh, I think they're calling this silver twill carbon fiber, but it looks pretty black to me. Um, nice, nice smooth seamless inlay here. I'll say this, if you've had trouble with front flippers in the past, or you aren't even sure if they're for you, this one is among the easiest to use I've ever tried. It, it really is effortless, uh, kind of any way you wanna do it. Price on these start at uh, just about 215 and go up to around 225. This is brand new from Bradford Knives, their Guardian 3 folder. So when I heard they were making this folder, I hadn't seen pictures yet, and I was picturing a folding version of their Guardian 3 fixed blade, which has a finger choil and sort of a rounded end to the handle. This is quite different, and I actually like it quite a lot. It's USA made. This version has turquoise titanium handles, frame lock, over travel stop, M390 steel, and a really nice crisp detent that makes flipping it open an absolute pleasure. For a stout, but still relatively small, everyday carry folder, I think it's a phenomenal choice. And these are available now for just under $360. So if $360 is a little dear for you, but you're still really interested in a folder with premium steel, the new Spyderco Stretch 2 with K390 might be for you. So the, the Stretch has been a part of Spyderco's lineup for years now, made in Seki City, Japan, alongside the Delica and Endura. But I think it's been a little overshadowed by those knives, uh, in part because the original Stretch had a, what Spyderco called a drop point blade, which I think was a little sort of swoopy for most people uh, aesthetically. I happen to think it's a blade shape that works really well, but um, I must admit it looks a little strange. So with this version, they've gone to a straight spine. And uh, it's funny how just a small little change like that in blade shape can really transform a knife. I mean, I think this knife looks phenomenal now. Um, in fact, it reminds me of one of Spyderco's most popular knives, the Paramilitary 2. It's right about in the same size range with a 3.5 inch blade, nice, full handle, whether you're gripping it behind the choil or choking up into the choil. For the money, right now, about $140 on the website, you get a ton of performance with this K390 blade steel. K390, not a stainless steel, but it's very tough and it has excellent edge retention. So if you're looking for a worker that won't quit, stretch two. Moving to another new Spyderco, we've got the UK pen knife with LC200N. These are really cool. I've actually never handled one of these UK pen knives before, and I was really impressed by uh, just the way it operates. So I have it open here. It's a slip joint. It takes a good amount of force to get it to close, and then it has a nice crisp 
half stop on the way closed. It's kind of a different feel from any other slip joint you may have used in the past. They have a unique split back spring here. I don't know if you can see it. It just gives a very uh, like a crispness to the feel that I've never quite felt before. It really pops into place suddenly. Um, because of those really kind of crisp detents on the way open, you can actually flick it open and even flick it closed, which is it's pretty cool to get a slip joint that you can fidget with and it still is very safe thanks to that finger choil. Has a nice kind of integrated safety in that uh, if the spring were to close on you, your finger being in the way would keep it from closing on your hand, which is a great little touch in a slip joint knife. And you've got, you know, some of Spyderco's really greatest hits here. Nice deep carry wire pocket clip. It is made in Golden, Colorado. And this is only $88.90 right now, which I think is a pretty great price considering the super, super stainless LC200 and steel, the lightweight build, and um, just the everyday utility of a, of a knife like this. So moving from one slip joint to another, we have a new Boker. This is the Swell End Jack with a spear point blade as well as a bottle opener. I guess that makes it a multi-tool. That does make it a multi-tool. <laughs> this one in particular has synthetic horn handles, which I thought were super gorgeous. You got kind of a, a translucence here. Reminds me almost of like a glass marble, the way the colors sort of are translucent within the scales themselves. I'm not sure what this synthetic bone is made out of, but it really looks beautiful. These are made in Germany and feature N690 steel. So despite the traditional build, you get some modern materials here and have a nice springy half stop. Nice walk and talk on these. Yeah, with that bottle opener, this is, this is a fun one. This version with the synthetic horn is available for $209.25 right now. In addition to these synthetic horn scales, it's also available with a couple of wood options, should that be more to your taste. Next up, a couple new fixed blades from Joker Knives. This brand was new to me, and I have to say I'm really impressed with the quality that you get for the price. This right here is their Nordico fixed blade, probably the most Scandinavian-inspired bushcraft design in the lineup that I've seen so far. Nice, simple, very straightforward, but elegantly contoured handle here. Going to be great for those long bushcraft carving days out in a campsite. Scandi Grind is going to make it ideal for working with wood. And this has 14C28 and steel for kind of a great combination of stainlessness, toughness, and value. These come in at $91.95 which gets you the knife and this great little leather sheath with a nice snap-on dangler so you can take it on and off your belt without having to take off or on your belt. Like all Joker knives, these are made in Spain. And uh, yeah, for the price, the fit and finish here is just phenomenal. Really seamless, really nicely polished, full tang construction. Uh, this knife in particular has tan canvas micarta handles but the next knife has beautiful wood handles. This is the Campero, and it is just slightly bigger than the Nordico with a four inch blade made again from 14C28N. Uh, this has a flat grind and a, kind of a subtle little clip point here. I think if you're not so much into a Scandi grind or not super passionate about bushcraft, just want a kind of a woods knife or an everyday companion blade. Uh, this would be the choice I would go for. Again, the, the quality for the price, $95.95, .95, is excellent, is excellent. Made in Spain, nice consistent edge, very sharp out of the box, and again, that great leather sheath. Moving from some humble companion knives to something quite outrageous, this is the Work Tough Nomad Field Knife. Uh, this is a smaller version of Zeke Minacho's Nomad Knife, um, which I think appeared several weeks ago on the new knives video. 
This features a seven inch blade out of thick K340 steel, uh, which is a steel I was actually not familiar with before. Seems to be in kind of like the modified D2 family of steels, a uh, little extra chromium for added edge retention and stainlessness. And it is also quite tough, which is a perfect complement to a design like this. I mean, look at the look at the stock thickness on that. This is a chopper. This is a knife you are gonna want to be rough with, and uh, a knife that's gonna hold up to some real heavy use. Um, one thing I particularly like about this design is the how how broad the blade is and the angle that it kind of meets the handle with. It it gives it a, a surprising kind of kitchen knife agility. Even though it's super thick, I can see Zeke's um, kitchen knife inspiration perhaps. Um, I, I, I'm kind of itching to put this on a cutting board and see how it'll do against some onions. Um, probably make them spring apart across the kitchen, but uh, still, I think for a camp knife that can chop and slice, this, this might be up to it. Price on these right now is about $234, and for that you get the knife, plus a nice tight kydex sheath, dangler, fire steel, work tough patch, and you know, a little piece of paracord, why not? Moving from one beast of a fixed blade to a different kind of beast, this is the Tor Knives Karsumba. So obviously a Karamba inspired design. This has a 2.5 inch blade made from S35VN and my Carta handle scales here, full tang construction. Unlike a traditional Karamba, there's no ring here at the end, but the way the handle really aggressively kind of drops down and curves into your hand uh, really locks it in. It almost feels like it's gripping you back, whether you have it in a forward grip or a reverse grip definitely an aggressive cutter and it really is pushing the point of that karambit forward for uh, thrusting and slashing cuts. Uh, this comes with a nice kydex sheath. These are made in San Diego by Tour and are available now for $235. So I actually just checked, this will definitely work with a large tech lock. The small might work, it might be a little bit of a tight fit, but definitely works worth a large. Again, these have S35 VN steel, if I didn't say that already, and are made in the USA. Moving from knives, we have some awesome custom tools from Jesper Voxnes. This is his Sulky the Seahorse bottle opener. These come in right now at about 165, made from super thick titanium. Um, what really sets these apart, other than the fact that they're custom made by Jesper in his shop, are the individual little engravings on each one. This one has a lucky shamrock. There's another one with the heart, crossbones on this side. Each one's kind of different and the finish on these is really cool. Uh, Jesper is calling this his triple anodized titanium finish. And you can really see two or three colors at a time in here as you kind of turn it in the light. I see purple, I see maybe green, a little gold, depending on how the light hits it. It's really hypnotizing and um, these are just very satisfying to hold and use. In addition to Sulky the Seahorse, we also have a couple of his uh, Snailer bottle openers as well as a little owl one as well. So moving from custom titanium bottle openers to custom titanium knife accessories, we got a whole bunch of new scales in from Flytanium. Sorry about the bag, but I didn't want to unbox these. I'll leave that to whoever ends up buying these scales, which are titanium for the new mini Benchmade 940, the Benchmade 945. So if you have a 945 and you wish it had titanium scales, titanium has you covered. So in addition to titanium scales for the 945, they've got carbon fiber, copper, G10, micarta, uh, pretty much anything you want you can make your 945 truly your own. We also have new scales for the bug out. This is actually sort of a custom milled pattern to Flytanium. And again, sorry about the bag, but they're calling this their cross fade and it gives a nice kind of dimensionality to the bug out. They're contoured, they're milled. 
These are available again in Micarta, in G10, in carbon fiber. We also got new scales for the mini bug out. We have more for the paramilitary too. So uh, chances are, if you have one of those knives, Flytanium will make a scale you might be interested in. Well, that wraps it up for new knives of the week this week. Thanks for sticking with me. Um, David T. Anderson, of course, will be back next week. In the meantime, at least we have these cool new knives to look at together. All the links to these knives you can find in the description. Make sure when you head over to KnifeCenter.com to sign up for our knife rewards program. So if you're gonna spend your hard-earned money on these knives, you can at least get some money to spend on your next one. Thanks again, I'm Seth V. This is the Knife Center and have a good one. All right, go back under the table now. <laughs> Bye, I'll get better at this, I promise. <laughs>